Welcome back to Dave's Den. We're talking about building your bug out bag and this is part seven. If you haven't seen the first six parts, I have them all in a playlist, nice and convenient where you can just watch them all one after another at your leisure until you get back to this point here so that you know everything that we covered and everything that we're talking about. Other than that, we've covered a fair bit and I think we're ready to talk about getting your bag and putting it together. Okay, so this one here is probably going to be a little bit long-winded. Um, I'm going to try to make this concise and quick as possible, but there is a fair bit to talk about here. So I hope you guys have got yourself a coffee, tea, drink, whatever. Run to the fridge, grab yourself a cold beer, whatever it is you're going to do. Now, we've talked about the 10 C's. We've talked about food and luxury items. We have talked about first aid and, and uh, emergency uh, type equipment. Um, you know, all the really, really important stuff. The rest of your bug out bag, inch bag, camp pack, whatever it may be, is entirely based around you. I can't tell you exactly what to put into it. Now, as you can see around me, I've got a bunch of different bags that I will briefly show off, talk about a little bit. But before I do, I want to talk to you about a concept called line gear. I do believe I've mentioned this in previous videos, but it is kind of, it's one of those things where you really should reiterate it. Okay, your basics of line gear, and I won't get too, too far into it, um, but your, your basics of line gear, you have line one. That is everything that you have on your body that stays there. You have line two. That is things that you want to take with you if you are going to be outside of your immediate camp. If you're going to go maybe for a little walk and pick berries or gather firewood or, you know, something um, that's going to take you beyond the very, you know, minimal range, the, the visual range of your campsite, you're going to want your Line 2 gear. Then there's your Line 3 gear. That is basically your, your rucksack, your backpack, your duffel bag, whatever. That is the bulk of your gear. Your tent, your sleeping bag, your blah, blah, blah. All the stuff that you bring into the woods with you. And as an extension, there is your Line 4 gear, which is gear that you have left in your vehicle for when you get back to your vehicle and maybe possibly might need something. A good example is maybe an MRE or some form of uh, food that you know you, you get to your truck and you just break into some food and you eat and you, you're like oh that's so much better that before you you know start making a drive home could be uh, a big difference after you know a long haul of camping or you know doing a lot of stuff that I do. Um, so Line gear is it's definitely a really good idea and it's the more you think about it the more important it basically gets. Now a good rule about line gear. You can move gear down in number or replace it back to its proper line, but you never ever ever move line gear upwards in number. So, a good example of line one is your bush knife, which I actually don't have mine here. Um, for me, it's my Buck Selkirk. That stays on my belt at all times. 
it never, ever, ever goes to line two. It's always on me while I'm in the woods. My example of a line two gear could be, um, well, in my hurry to shuffle everything around, I don't know what I did with the other piece. This this is uh, the, the bag part of my Katadyne uh, B-Free water filter. In my line three, I have the Katadyne Hiker Pro water filter, but this one here, I carry around, I fill it in a stream, I put the, the lid on and I can drink it. This is a good example of line two. I don't need this on me the whole time I'm in camp, but if I'm leaving camp, I'm going to want something like this or a, um, a little mini straw filter, a, you know, whatever, portable uh, kind of thing uh, that I can still get water with. And I don't necessarily ever need to make that line one, but I could if I wanted to, but I never, ever, ever make it line three. Never. So, that's a good kind of general rule of things that you have on you in certain situations and they always either stay where they are or move closer to your body, but never further away. This way here, if you find yourself in a bad situation, you're less screwed. Um, you might be up shit creek, but you will have a paddle. I'm going to do a quick illustration of uh, how to accomplish that. Um, just for some of you who might not totally get it, and I'm sure you all do because I tend to over explain things a lot of the time from what I understand and uh, I talk too much. But I, I'm still going to illustrate this. So my Line 3 gear is generally my rucksack. This is the 1982 pattern Canadian military rucksack. Um, it's kind of uh, the Canadian version of an Alice pack. Um, to be honest, I think it's a little bit more comfortable to wear. Maybe not necessarily as durable. Um, but it is, for my purposes, pretty good. Um, so, that is my line three. Now, an acceptable, an acceptable line two would be something along the lines of my get lost bag. This is a bit much. Normally when I go out, this would actually still be my line three. But, for the time being, or for the purposes, I could very easily just grab this and walk out of camp and have everything I need if I happen to get lost or injure myself. And eh, it's a bit much, but it is a pretty good example. A prime example is my Canadian 82 pattern webbing or load bearing harness. Now, you'll have to, this is um, kind of a cheap uh, knockoff of, a, uh, of an Alice pack. I've been experimenting a little bit with a few ideas and I didn't take it off, um, but barring barring the knockoff Alice pack, which very well could just be a hydration bladder. And then I have, no, you guys can't even see. <laughs> All right, hold on. Bring it down a little bit. And as you can see, I've got all the little pouches and kind of where, and you can actually fit a lot in one of these butt, butt packs too. Um, right now I have, oh, there's part of my water filter I was just playing with, and I have an MRE, and I have a couple other things in there, um, but I could, in theory, uh, carry almost everything that I would need for this to be uh, a line three, or I could minimalize it, go lightweight, and that's my line two. Before I leave camp, I just grab this, strap it onto me, and go for a walk, and I'm good to go. 
So the the concept of, of line gear is just super, super helpful and useful to keep you prepared for whatever eventuality you might run into. And some of you have watched my videos for a while, and some of you will know I am an idiot. I do dumb things like, oh, I'm going to take this rickety canoe that I'm unfamiliar with, and I'm going to explore that river down there, not knowing that there was a waterfall. I'm going to go over the waterfall, I'm going to crash it into a tree, knock a hole in my canoe, end up in a survival situation out in the middle of nowhere, and all my food washed down river. Um, and, I mean, what am I going to do? Am I going to be more careful? Where's the fun in that? I had a blast. I, I still had my fishing gear. We ate. My, my nephew and I were there. We ate. I caught fish and, you know, kind of whatever. We had a, a, a fine time. It, you know, wasn't really planned, but it was a lot of fun. So, with that kind of attitude, and, you know, just the fact that I'm a dumbass, having, you know... A little bit of eventuality preparedness definitely doesn't hurt at all. Um, it, it certainly helps me uh, with my, you know, just stump the way through my day. Uh, okay, so on to bag selection. Now, I have the Molly 2 rucksack. A bit much for most people, I will admit. This thing is bomb-proof. You will never destroy one of these, I swear. And I have the 82 pattern rucksack that I'm using now. The only reason why I stopped using this is because it weighs 15 pounds empty, and, you know, it's just weight is becoming an issue as I get older. Uh, okay. <clears throat> now, I should mention... There are different trains of thought on a lot of, you know, this bag selection thing. A lot of people say, don't go for a military bag because you'll make yourself a target. Well, I mean, yeah, that could possibly happen, but, I mean, that could happen. You could be carrying one of those hiker backpack, you know, that, that costs you three, four hundred dollars and, you know, you're still going to make yourself a target carrying around a big pack like that, especially something expensive. And, I mean, no offense to anybody out there. No offense at all. I prefer the military gear because it's tried, true, tested, rugged, and, and I could be wrong on this, I think that if I spend my money on military gear, that at least kind of helps veterans with a little extra cash here and there. They, they, they take their gear into wherever and they sell it, you know, when they no longer need it. They get a little extra cash and everybody could use an extra five bucks. Okay? That's... Doesn't matter who you are. You'd always... Unless you're Bill Gates or, or uh, Elon Musk, you'd always use another five bucks in your wallet. So, whatever it is they make, me personally, I think maybe it helps. That's basically why I do it. And, once again, no offense to anybody out there, but if you think that a $300 backpack will carry your stuff better than a $50 used military backpack, there is something wrong with your line of thinking. You need to sort of readjust that and really sit down and think about, you know, your opinions there. So, um, once again, I mean, that's just me, but, hey, I'm just trying to save you some money and, you know, be your friend. Everybody needs a good friend, right? Okay. messenger bag, I think. I think I'm pretty sure this is called a messenger bag. Either way, something like this for more of a minimal type thing is good for those skilled enough to uh, to be able to use this as a bug out bag and uh, be satisfied with it. And that keeps your weight down. It keeps your food options limited. In any bug out situation, you probably want to have no less than three days worth of food, and you want to have the ability to either obtain water, or you want to have water. Or, even better, both. This is the SOG Ninja Pack. It's a little bit small 
for most bug out bags, but it is a rugged bag. It is relatively cheap. I picked it up at Walmart and it was like $35 Canadian. So that's probably, I don't know, like $2 American. <laughs> it's probably like $25. I don't know. Either way, it's, it's a rugged bag. You can't, you can't really go wrong with it. Assault pack. This is a fairly small assault pack, but it is modular. It has um, water bladder capability. Um, once again, for more of a minimalist uh, kind of thing, it, it certainly is useful. Um, even a school backpack, really, will do. Now, can you guys... Yeah, you can, but I think I'll zoom in on it. Just a simple little vest. Nothing special. It's got a backpack area in the, uh, in the back part, obviously. Basically, you know... Little saw that pocket's perfect for a uh, silky pocket boy. That's just a cheap knockoff. A uh, little flashlight, fire starter capability, uh, a knife that uh, I did a review on um, like two, almost two years ago, I guess. Uh, thank you, Frank, for sending that to me. That is part of this rig here. a more comprehensive uh, load-bearing vest uh, is a good option as well. Insect repellent because I live in Canada. Sunscreen because I'm a night shift worker, have been most of my life, and I will burst into flame if I go out too long. <laughs> it's it gets worse over time. Um, some rather large pockets. All my eating utensils, cooking stuff, everything is you know kind of whatever. All my shelter stuff in the back. A uh, sleeping bag, sort of riding butt pack, and uh, a cheap sleeping pad that I decided to give a try to, and totally not worth it. So actually, not. Um, in the backpack part of it here, I normally just throw my hammock and uh, and tarp into that when I go out. Um, It's, it's definitely uh, very useful, holds everything I need, and more. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun to go out camping with just, you know, that. Um, and I have done that a number of times. I don't know if I've done a video with that yet or not. But, um, now where... A chair bag for one of those cheap camp chairs. I have my instant base camp in here. I've willed it down a little bit so it's, it doesn't have quite so many tarps uh, since I did a review on it um, or a video with it. Um, and I do want to get out and actually do something with this at some time soon. I know some of you have been waiting uh, for me to do something with this. Um, Basically, I just I threw a bunch of stuff into it and I threw it off to the side to forget about it until I can't fully remember everything that I have in here so that when I do go out into the woods and rip it apart, maybe it's a bit of a surprise. So, we'll see. But even something like that... Now, I could bring my backpack or that minimalist kit into the woods with me. 
I can set this up as a base camp and then satellite camp around that as I maybe hunt or fish an area and then come back to my base camp when I, you know, need a, a more comfortable place to sleep than just on the ground with a little mat or, you know, a, a browse bed or whatever uh, because I'm pretty sure I got a, a hammock in here. Pretty sure I do. I, I can't remember to be honest. It's been a couple of years now. Um, but yeah, this is just something that I threw together uh, messing around. Didn't even cost really all that much. Um, lost track of how much to be honest. Um, but you know, it, it could double as a bug out bag. There is food in here. I do remember there is food in here. So all of this aside, everything being said, the container matters marginally less than the contents. As long as you get something that will hold the weight that you need it to hold, is rugged enough to perform the way you need it to perform, it doesn't matter if you spent $10 at a used whatever store, $30 or $40 at a military surplus shop, two or $300 at a camp store, hiking store, you know, kind of whatever. It doesn't matter if you use a bucket, your little red wagon, even, you know, one of those trailers that you put kids in and you pull it behind your bike. You can just, you know, rig it to you or put it on the back of your bike and go. Whatever works for you. It, it, it As long as the container that you have performs the way that you need it to do, the container matters marginally less than the contents. Now, as for the contents, I did mention earlier, a lot of what's going to go into your bag is your kind of certain thing. Medications that you might need. Your comfort items. Maybe you don't like coffee. Maybe you're more of a scotch kind of guy, or you like certain kinds of tea, or whatever it is. That goes into your bag, or at the very least, it goes into a, a, a good sized like Ziploc bag or whatever into your fridge, rotate it once in a while, and in the event that you bug out, you just go into the fridge, you grab that, you put it into your leg drop pouch, your backpack, your little red wagon, wherever it is, and you go. Things should be modular and mostly together, but, I mean, if your thing is tomato ketchup, grab your tomato ketchup. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. Now the final part of the video, and I think I'm going to use my webbing with uh, the bag attached to it, just as uh, illustration. Um, this way here I don't have to rip apart my whole bag again, and it actually um, gives me an excuse to have this on here for this video when I was just messing around with it before. Okay, so I got my load bearing equipment. Harness, webbing, blah, 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 whatever, along with a... It's in the form of an Alice pack. And if Alice had sort of a sissy little brother, this would be it. I don't personally think this thing will carry all that much weight. Um, and it's about the size of a large Alice pack, so it's too big for such a delicate piece of material. Um, but I'm always experimenting. I'm always trying new things. So, you got your butt pack. You could put your sleep system, or most of it, in here. You could put your first aid kit, all kinds of, you know, kind of whatever. And then you've got the pouches all along the side. You could rig this up so that your whole sleep system, minus a tent maybe, um, could fit into your individual pouches and, and whatnot here. Hammock, tarp, you know, all kinds of crazy, all your cordage, you know, kind of whatever. And then on the back, there's three small pockets up here. There's three large pockets down here. Um, this could be food and water. It could be your first aid emergency uh, type stuff. It could be, you know, sort of whatever. And you've got a big main pouch and then what would have been the radio pouch on uh, 
on an Alice pack. Um, I'm sure some of you aren't familiar with uh, with Alice packs, but many of you probably are, and uh, it's really, really hard to sort of impart all of this on camera, so I guess you're going to have to use your imagination, but the main bulk of your gear can go into here. Um, I mean, one thing that I'd kind of like to do is maybe fill it full of pillows and uh, do a hike out with my buddies and just truck along because I'm not carrying any weight and they've got their packs on just lugging and lugging, <laughs> whatever, that'd be kind of funny. But you, man, it is dry down here. Whew. You should pick something that has some capability for organization. Now, let's say that I just had a one pocket ruck. I could still strap it to my load bearing equipment or I could put on my load bearing equipment and then put on the ruck and I could still keep things in a reasonable order so that the emergency stuff is accessible. The rain stuff is accessible, okay? <clears throat> that is um, probably the most important point to make in this particular video. Modulate your gear, sort it out, Keep it organized and accessible, the stuff that you really, really, really are going to need to get to quickly if something bad happens. If you're fishing, and this has happened, this has happened to somebody that I was fishing with. If you're fishing and you get a fish hook in the eye, the last thing that you want to do is start digging through your junk looking for your first aid kit to get a patch over your eye and tape it on so that you can get yourself to a hospital and possibly save your eye. If you're lugging around through stuff and your eye's moving around, there's a fish hook in it, you're probably going to lose that eye. Don't do that to yourself. Please, please do not do that to yourself. Have it easily accessible. I can't stress that enough. I've seen way too many bad things happen. And when, when a bad situation starts to get worse, you tend to make poor and poor choices which just chain effect. It just makes things worse and worse and worse and worse. Stop, relax, think, rest and, and recuperate. Revive yourself a bit. Make better choices and always have your emergency gear accessible to you easily. I think that about covers my rambling on of this video. If you've made it to the end, my hat's off to you. <laughs> anyway, I think that about wraps up this series, everything that I wanted to, to, to kind of say about the um, building your bug out bag. Um, I'm sure I didn't quite think of everything. I'm sure there's going to be some questions. Please, by all means, questions, comments, advice. I mean, not that it's a really big deal. It doesn't really bother me, you know, really at all. Um, I've been getting some nasty comments in a lot of my videos. And, you know, normally I just, I go on, I point out that, you know, they're being kind of a jerk for no apparent reason at all. And, you know, I mean, if you're, don't have anything constructive to add, why bother? So please, put something in the comments that um, would, would be helpful. Constructive criticism isn't even a big idea, or a big deal. But the idea is, is to add to the, the conversation, add to the video, add your knowledge to whatever I'm imparting so that everybody kind of gets in on the whole thing and we learn from each other because I don't know everything yet either. You know, so, like, please, guys, don't just leave, you know, some crummy comment, you know, telling me to go F myself or whatever because you don't agree with my choice of knife. That's ridiculous. You know, let's let's help each other out. Let's let's actually um, let's actually be a community here. Um, now, I had a thought and if, if you like this idea, 
let me know in the comments what you think about it. If it's a good idea, a bad idea, would you take part, would you not? Um, I was thinking it would have been nice at the end of this series, which I believe would be this video, I, I wait one week and I do a live stream a week, week and a half after the end of the series. So I would put down, this is the final video of this series. A live stream will follow on whatever date and time. And then I would go on and I would do a live stream where everybody could get involved and you know we could sort of have a conversation and we could ask questions and we could you know bounce ideas back and forth on one another. I think that if I had more subscribers, I think that would probably work out a lot better. Um, right now I'm a small channel and I got no problem with that. No problem at all. I definitely, uh, I like knowing that some of you at least enjoy my videos and, and get something out of it. But I think it would be really, really good to plan, you know, like a Wednesday evening type of uh, sort of thing where, you know, we can all get together on the live stream and talk about, you know, whatever series ended the Friday a week and a half before. You know, give everybody a chance to actually see the video, find out, you know, that the live stream will be on that day and, you know, kind of whatever. And uh, we all kind of jump in and take part of, on it. Um, but, I mean, you know, that's just me thinking. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that idea and whether or not, you know, you would take part on it. And, like, is Wednesday a, uh, a good day to do that? Or should it be on the weekend? Or, you know, kind of, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's up to you guys to tell me. Uh, so, yeah, this is the end of my rambling video and my rambling series, How to Build Your Bug Out Bag. I really, really sincerely hope that helped a bunch of people to get going and, and you know, figure out what they're going to do, what they're going to put together, and and how to go about doing that. And I hope it saves some people some money, too. So... Hmm. I don't really know what I'm going to do next, but i got to come up with it pretty darn soon because uh, I'm running out of videos to drop. So maybe, maybe you guys could let me know in the comments section what you would like to see, what you would like to talk about, what, what kind of video uh, would you like to see me do more of or less of or whatever as well. Um, help me out because... You know, it's not my channel, it's our channel. This is our community. And, you know, we're all friends here for the most part. So, you know, we gotta we gotta we gotta stick together on this thing and uh you know, maybe even reach out and make this channel grow a little bit to make, you know, the possibility of live streams uh a little bit more a, a better idea to, to get out to a bigger audience. Um so let me know. Until then guys, stay wild.